Privacy and security of health information are of utmost importance in today's technologically advancing world. The increased use of electronic health records, as well as smartphones, tablets, and patient portals, are changing how we look at our health care. The laws and regulations that protect our information also need to change. Currently, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, sets the standards for protecting the privacy, confidentiality, and security of health information. Dr. William Braithwaite, who was instrumental in drafting the privacy and security rules, was known when they first came as Dr. HIPAA. Let's hear what he has to say. When we talk about HIPAA, particularly privacy and security, we're thinking about the HIPAA Administrative Simplification subtitle. The rest of this huge law was about health insurance portability and so on. Um, it all started with a work group on electronic data interchange back in the early 90s who decided that healthcare was wasting 30% of the money that was being put into health insurance by doing very strange and um, actually absurdly expensive exchanges of information between providers and health plans. So they um, went to Congress, they talked to some folks about that, a couple of laws were drafted. Um, and at the same time in the House, laws were being drafted about privacy, based on the same uh, fair information privacy practices that resulted in the 1974 Federal Privacy Act. But those uh, privacy rules had never been able to be passed by Congress. So when the administrative simplification idea came up, um, it didn't get very far. But in 1993, when Clinton's health reform bill was coming through, there was a whole section in there about health information technology. And I was at sort of the right person at the right place at the right time and managed to put together a coalition of staff from the House and the Senate, um, both parties, and with industry input, came up with this law called administrative simplification which laid out the standards that everybody would have to follow in order to save this money, but also took into consideration the fact that as we turned people's health information into electronic form and started shooting it around over the internet or any other form of connection, that the security and privacy of that information had to be protected because at that time there were no laws on a federal level to protect your health information. So the combination, uh, was very powerful, and um, when Clinton's health reform bill didn't get passed, the administrative simplification law got saved and got attached to every health reform bill that got introduced over the next two or three years. And finally, in 1996, when HIPAA, as a Health Insurance Portability uh, Act, got uh, passed, um, the administrative simplification law was attached to it. Now, by that point, the Congress had realized that they couldn't pass a privacy law. They promised they would, um, but they never did. So when the law was about to be passed and signed, um, we got them to change a few words. So in addition to setting the standards for doing administrative simplification, it says that Congress agrees to pass a comprehensive health information privacy law within three years. But if they fail, the secretary is given the power to do it by regulation. And so uh, when you look into the, the HIPAA law for where's the privacy law, there isn't one. The law actually didn't appear until it became regulation in the year 2000. Providers are um, more accepting of HIPAA now because when it first came out, it came out in a way that scared everybody. I think um, I don't know exactly why or where it started, but the idea of HIPAA is this new law, it makes you do things that you've never had to do before, uh, and you don't see a reason for it, and it's expensive, and it's scary because they're going to throw you in jail if you don't do it. None of which was true. But um, the whole idea, for example, that the privacy rule in HIPAA was based around one simple concept, which is don't surprise the patient. Patients are learning more and more over time about it. They're becoming more aware, particularly when they start using Facebook and 
all these new social media, they realize, um, especially when they watch what their kids do with this stuff, they realize that that information, which is not secret anymore, can be hurtful. Um, they also realize that the healthcare system is more complex and that it isn't just their doctor that needs this information. So the whole idea that um, patients should be educated about what privacy is about and what people do with their health information was the reason why everybody's given a notice. When you go to the doctor's office for the first time, you're given a notice of their privacy practices. That was the first attempt to educate people about what really goes on. Um, I think what happened was most people just put that in the, they signed it and then they put it in the trash because it was too long, it was too complicated, it was written by a team of lawyers. Um, we've gotten around that now and finally uh, those notices are, are aimed at the patient and educating them about what the real issues are. So I think they are, they're catching on and they're getting better about being aware of the privacy issues. In 2009, a new law was passed, the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, or High Tech Act. This law was actually part of the Economic Stimulus Law, known as the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. High Tech included new provisions for strengthening the privacy and security protections for health information. Uh, high Tech is, is essentially an extension of HIPAA in a variety of areas, and that was passed not too long ago. And uh, so every couple of years they pass another law that can tweak what was set out in HIPAA. I don't think the HIPAA law as a, as a bolus could be passed today, but increments to make it better, to improve and fine tune it can be and are being passed. I think the key changes in high tech um, with respect to HIPAA privacy is in um, enforcement. That is, um, the Department of HHS took a very slow educational uh, approach to enforcement. And when breaches happened, when problems were reported, they sent someone out, they investigated, and then they said, this is what you need to do to fix this problem. There were no fines, there were nobody put in jail. Um, uh, but after 10 years, when the things that should have been fixed a decade ago didn't happen, then Congress said, all right, it's time to put the hammer down and make people pay more attention to this law. So the, uh, the fines were raised, the ability for state attorneys general to prosecute under HIPAA instead of just the federal government. Um, those probably um, brought the level of enforcement up uh, a huge amount and made people go back and pay attention. People were scared when HIPAA privacy first came out and then nothing happened. So they stopped being scared and they stopped paying attention in, uh, in many cases. So this sort of raises the bar again and makes sure that people are doing the right thing. Now, what they've discovered by forcing people to report when breaches occur is that millions of people's records are being breached. And so garbage trucks full of paper records, the top blows off and the records get flying all over the place. So a lot of them are paper. Uh, doctors, especially uh, in the old days, used to put the paper records in their trunk and take them home to look over the records and sign them and then someone would steal the car. So there were lots of ways that records could be stolen, but one of the huge issues right now, particularly because of the volume, is that people are stealing portable devices like laptops. And when people who work on medical records put millions of records on a laptop and the laptop gets stolen, that's a huge breach, even though the purpose of stealing the laptop isn't to violate someone's privacy, it is to make money so they can get money, basically, uh, from reselling the laptop, but it is a breach. So what the security rule says is that you have to do a risk analysis to figure out what the risks are and then do something reasonable and appropriate to mitigate those risks. Well, the risks of laptops being stolen can be mitigated if you encrypt the hard disk. So the guidance that has come out says, follow the security rule. This is a real risk now. Pay attention. Encrypt everything. And if you encrypt it 
and you lose the laptop or it gets stolen, it's no longer a breach. So they've managed to enforce the security rule by specifying what can get you out of being enforced against when a laptop is stolen. But it's pretty clear that in the next year, uh, mobile healthcare and um, the increase in technology of the cloud and the use of the cloud and mobile devices. Physicians are um, bringing their own mobile devices to the hospital and to the clinic and expecting to use them, uh, which raises huge privacy and security risks. You know, doctors are very powerful in healthcare environments, and when they say, I want to use my mobile device, um, the administration and the technical people in particular have a tough time pushing back against that because it's the doctors that bring the patients, that bring the money into the institution, and if they decide to go somewhere else, then uh, the, an institution can lose a lot of money. On the other hand, uh, bringing in mobile devices that are unsecure threatens the whole institution with the breach of the health information, and so there's a battle going on right now uh, between those two forces, and I think technology will step in and help the CIOs figure out how to make it work, but they haven't done it yet. As we have seen, the administrative simplification provisions that were attached to the HIPAA law in 1996 were the first attempt at outlining some guidelines for protecting health information. In 2000, the privacy rule was established which further described what needed to be done. At first, HIPAA was seen as a huge burden, but over time, healthcare professionals and patients have become more comfortable with the rules. However, we have seen that with more adoption of electronic health records, there are still problems, and it became obvious that stricter enforcement was needed. The High Tech Act of 2009 further strengthened the regulations and the enforcement procedures. Protecting the privacy and security of health information in the digital age will be an ongoing process. As technology improves, new and better ways to protect the privacy of health information will emerge.